Hi there, it's Alex. I'm going to be doing a video about trees. And before I get there, I want to do uh, a couple disclaimers. So my main camp's uh, current information from Far Away Light takes precedence in regards to anything my main camp from Far Away Light indicated. My main camp's current information from Far Away Light regarding anything to do with me takes precedence how my main camp from Far Away Light indicated. My main camp's current information from Far Away Light regarding anything having anything to do with me takes precedence how my main camp from Far Away Light indicated. My main camp's current information from Far Away Light regarding anything to do with me and others defined by my main camp from Far Away Light takes precedence how my main camp from Far Away Light indicated. My main camp's current information from Far Away Light in regards to others defined by my main camp from Far Away Light <sighs> takes precedence how my main camp from Far Away Light indicated. <sighs> my main camp's current information from Far Away Light for what they chose for this content takes precedence in regards to anything in regards to this content. My main camp's current information from Far Away Light for what they chose for this content takes precedence in regards to anything having anything to do in regards to this content. So I am want to do a couple advocations as well. I'm advocating for the trees to be protected, defended, healed, and etc. defined by my main camp the way my main camp indicated. I'm advocating for who my main camp indicated to be protected, defended, healed, and etc. defined by my main camp the way my main camp indicated. And yeah. So trees, what are they? They're like big roots uh, growing out of the out of the ground, right? And they look like they kind of remind me of wisdom. I don't know. There's something there. There's like a, a there's a symbolism uh, of. Uh, of this sort of thing, and what's interesting is I, I think of uh, I think of uh, certain films, and I think of uh, there's a, there's a certain uh, embodiment in in the spirit when I think of um, ants, you know, and, and and they're sort of like supposed to be tree guardians. But what's interesting about this is that I almost equate the ants to be trees, and they are trees in in mythology, walking trees, but I almost equate the trees themselves as being the ants. Like they're guardians, certain guardians in uh, in different places. Now I'm, I am a psychic medium. I do talk to spirits. I hear what they have to say. We converse. We talk about a lot of different things. We argue, and I am sorry for what, for what my main camp indicated, with my main camp's information from far relay taking precedence. <sighs> But uh, I started uh, being able to converse with the spirit realm around me, and I started uh, I started talking about a lot of different things, and a lot of what people I think uh, don't fully know or qu or quantify or or take a look at is that a lot of the feelings and perceptions in daily life. Um, are actually that of uh, of influences and and uh, from the spirit realm around us. Certain things within within uh, within fiction, within books, within movies, within perception. You know, perception itself could be a, a, a real thing. It could be you know uh, you, you perceive you, you have a certain perception of things. You think about you know a certain book and you feel a certain color towards it. That color might be there for a reason. It might be, it might exist for a reason. You think of, uh, you think of certain concepts and there is a lot of different things in regards to, to those concepts. And that might be, uh, you know, that might be, you know, behind the scenes stuff that is, that is living, breathing for to, for what's acceptable. <sighs> and, uh. And, and that's and that's a part of it. There, there's a lot of things uh, in regards to, I think, life that a lot of people don't notice. And uh, and I also pull from that too. 
I pull from pop culture because I think pop culture is influenced by the spirit realm around us. And so one of those things is when I, when I think about Ents and, uh, and, 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 and uh, I, I think that maybe they exist. But I think, I, I think that the, the, the trees themselves uh, could be so, uh, certain guardians. That, that the, sort of the, uh, the, the sort of perception that people have of Ents could, technically speaking, uh, also uh, be similar to that of how maybe some spirits in other dimensions view trees. And that's what's amazing about it. <sighs> and yeah, so... There is uh, a lot of different things uh, regarding trees that we might not know about. So like I said, I, I converse with, with spirits around me at times, and, and they, they channel through at times, and, uh, and I converse with them in my mind, and things like that. And, uh, and there's other communications too. But uh, there's also... And, and and there's there there could be you know other dimensions behind the scenes. You know if there was counterparts to the physical, like if you knew that you were experiencing memories behind the scenes, you know in in a certain way, you're like you you think on memories right, and you see the physical tab right, you see it for like a, a second, like when you think on memories, actually like like this like the physical actually thinking on memories, you like the physical like you 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 see it. I mean, and, and, and in other dimensions, they might not be the, the, the physical memory pool that they see. They might actually be, they might actually see that and not, they might be experiencing it in a different way when you, when you think on memories. That's what's cool about it. If there is, you know, such a thing. If you, why is it that it's so fleeting at times, at times in regards to certain people? There's some people in the world who probably look at their memories and can actually look at the tab for longer than like a couple seconds. But why does the tab move so damn quickly? What is it, like an auto thing? What goes on? Why is that? I think there's something to it, and I think, ah, oh, I don't want to, don't lie to me. <laughs> but I think there's something going on. But either way, uh, there's memories. But what if you're also experiencing memories in different places while you lived your life in the physical? So you were walking around and you know walking around in the street and what if like a, a bunch of people behind the scenes were, were jamming you know like playing some music or you were hanging around you know or you were hanging out with some buddies having fun and and you didn't know it you were just walking along in in the physical life a big galoot right <laughs> for freaks like there's there's this big impression that 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 they used to put on physicals at times <sighs> Cause I've been I've been a good boy once in a while. I put the cups up in my in, in the cupboard. <laughs> sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. <laughs> For freak's sake. Fuck anyways. Excuse my language. But uh, you know, there's this sort of like uh, giant impression. So when you think on giants, and I'm, I'm talking to the physical view viewers as well. I mean, when you think on giants, what's your impression on it? What's you know what is an impression in? Well, you think what's the impression on? What's your perception of it? What's your what's your mentality on it? What's your viewpoint on it? What's your what's your look on it? You know what is it? Like is there like sort of like a, a big kind of movement? It's it's a big kind of feeling, right? Is it? I, you, some people know what I'm talking about. Some people know what I'm talking about. There, there's a few. There's a few. <laughs> Or maybe a lot, potentially. If we're talking about, you know, well, I took a pot shot guess in regards to physicals, but for free sake. Hmm. Well, people doesn't just mean uh, physicals, you know. <sighs> people can, people is technically speaking, uh, I think, similar to spirits to a certain degree. <sighs> but yeah, we, uh, we take a look at, uh, you know, memories, and, and, and that's a part of it. So, 
if we are experiencing certain things behind the scenes that's different, like, imagine if we looked different, we had a different, like, spiritual body. You know how in some spiritual teachings there's different bodies, like, you've heard of, like, you know, the etheric bodies and astral bodies and, and that sort of stuff? You know, and I know that it refers, it might be referring to uh, a few different kinds of, of, of spiritual bodies behind the scenes. Because there's, because everyone has different schools of thoughts and, and different labelings and, and classifications for, for that sort of, you know, other dimensional, uh, you know, uh, bodies and stuff like that. What if we were actually, uh... <sighs> <sighs> But yeah, the, you know, so what would it be? What would the other dimensional, uh, so what would it look like? Imagine if we were experiencing it in ways that we can't even quantify down here. And I know that I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, veering off course, but I'm doing it for a reason because when I come back to it, people have a little more context for it. So we, you know, you know, some of the things that we can see, but, you know, behind the scenes, what if it was similar to what we, you know, can, you know, see in the physical and then some of it, what if some of it wasn't? You imagine the, uh, you know, I almost equate it to uh, the, the cantina scene, you know? And, and I'm advocating for healing, protection, defense, as well as etc. Defined by my main camp in regards to Star Wars. Because <sighs> you go in there, you go to the cantina scene, and there's a lot of aliens around, right? There's a lot of aliens around. And then there's a lot of aliens around for a reason. <sighs> but imagine if it was, like, similar to that. And I refer to the cantina scene sort of similar to, um, like, saying that it's eclectic. That there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, you know things involved you know like it, it, when you say that like you know how many uh how many you know canteen it's, it's more sort of a metaphor for there being a, a, a shit ton you know a shit ton a lot different you know a lot of different things <sighs> a lot of different people a lot of different, you know it, it's it's a metaphor you know but the main camps are from far away like taking precedence <sighs> and yet you uh so imagine if we were experiencing things behind the scenes you know different memories and remember we pass on we go into the afterlife and and so we, we think of trees and, and, and what if our bodies or what if our bodies behind the scenes were different? What if you know what if we you know in, in some places were stationary? What if we didn't actually move around behind the scenes? What if um and I know that this concept's been, you know, and some of these concepts have been talked about within, within other videos that I've uploaded. And some of that has to do with... Well, with a lot of things. And if we were stationary, uh, you know, it, well, one of the concepts I wanted to talk about was uh, sort of, um, well, I, I guess we can we can skip off that, I think, <sighs> for now. <sighs> it's not because of that. So, if we were to think of trees, and I know that I've, I've veered off course a bit here. <sighs> what if, in other dimensions, the trees weren't necessarily um, stationary. Meaning that what, what I'm saying here is that what if the trees um, could, what if, what if in other dimensions the trees were more similar to humans? And what would that mean? How crazy would that be? What if in other dimensions humans are more similar to trees? <sighs> How cool would that be? Now I'm not saying that it's necessarily that, but I'm not, I'm also not gonna sit here and say that uh, you know it doesn't matter that, that that talking about that sort of thing doesn't matter because it does. We, we we you know, and what would that mean in regards to you know our destruction of trees? What if we were to, what if you were to you know what if we were to say here uh, you know th that our illness and, and, and illnesses and diseases that manifest in the physical what if they corresponded 
to other dimensions, and specifically our other dimensional bodies. What if, um, and what if some of them didn't? <laughs> oh, so we think of, uh, So what if uh, certain, uh, you know, dimensional counterparts in regards to ourselves, um, you know, get hurt to a certain degree and then it manifests in the physical. So, you know, and, and I have to think, you, you want to think of some of the big diseases you know, out there, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep moving on it. And that's pretty much it. And yeah, so, uh, so yeah, trees, uh, what exactly, and, and this is what's interesting about it, you know, I, I've come to sort of associate trees, uh, with, with life, with nature, with, um, breathing, almost breathing itself. Almost freshness, right? Well, they, they they clean they clean the air to a certain degree for humans, for for physical humans and, and other light and physical and other physical beings on this planet. They also sustain, uh, you know, the Earth's atmosphere to a certain degree. So I I feel that you know you know, you know and I, and I and I feel like the Earth has a spirit, and I'm doing this on a full moon. You know, a shout out to uh, Luna. You know, the moon that revolves, you know, uh, I think to a certain degree, uh, that, that depends on Earth. <laughs> Just as Earth might depend on, uh, you know, the moon. Um, and yeah, so, but there's other things too, behind the scenes that, are, that, that humans, you know, and other animals on the, you know, on this physical might not know about that other dimensionals might not fully know about. <laughs> now I think about morality promotion and anybody who's listening to, you know, some of the videos that I posted is like, please, finally, there's this one freaking video where you don't start sitting here talking about, uh, you know, some, always about ethics, always about morality, always about that sort of thing, <laughs> but it's a part of it. <sighs> and I have a perception that has to do with, um, it has to do with trees. Yeah, because... So yeah, if if there was, you know, these sort of dimensional counterparts, these sort of uh, overlapping um, existences to to you know to life, not just in regards to humans, but in regards to trees, what would that mean? Uh, the you know the continued uh, logging and 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 cutting down of trees uh, that that would be. Uh, That'd be fairly difficult uh, to 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 learn uh, that you know trees uh, might be uh, might be living. I mean, we already have a, a lot of uh, you know even in a lot of our culture, a lot of the trees are almost considered to be uh, not and but also so. <sighs> it's true. It's almost like there's an underlying current of there might be you know uh, you know you know spirit within tree. And there's a lot of underlying currents regarding that, but there's also, you know, not underlying currents. There's also a lack of scientific evidence to a certain degree. And of course, you know, what we do down here matters. And I know that, that people are trying to protect one another at times, but that's still one of those things where it's like, well, regardless, it's still being seen. It's still happening. 
and uh, and you can't you can't hide it. <sighs> you can you can lie to yourselves. You can lie to a few people, but you can't lie to most. <sighs> and that's the real true of it. <sighs> when uh, so trees, you know, could potentially, you know, could be spirits. Could could well, I, I feel like they are spirits. I feel like trees have souls. I feel like. Um, I feel like a lot of things, I think there's a lot of life in a lot of different things. Smell, potentially. <laughs> Smell itself. There could be, there could be, you know, life within that. There could be incarnations within the actual, uh, you know, experience that we experienced uh, through the sense of smell. And just, just to use it as one example, but, you know, trees is one of those things that's a little more, okay, well, <sighs> I, I, you know, it, it's difficult because we, we use trees also to build homes. We use trees to... Uh, construct things to build things inventions a lot of things we build down here are needed in regards to trees and I and I and I am advocating for you know you know I am hoping that the, you know that that sort of dimensional thing I was talking about earlier you know where where like you know dimensional counterparts could get sick from certain things um, you know like like certain diseases in the physical that we experience might be certain things behind the scenes happening in the spirit realms you know uh, in the you know that in, in the spirit realm it might be that sort of thing it might be things in front of the scenes that we can't well well I don't, I don't know if it would be that because in front of the scenes there's been a certain thing in regards to that but uh you know if we if we think about you know sort of the uh, certain lives they can, that that trees could be experiencing behind the scenes, it makes it fairly difficult to just think that they're a stationary uh, you know um, a thing because a lot of people do look at it th to a certain degree that way, and and, and uh, you know and, and it's almost it's very strange because in science in, in physical science uh, it is proven that that the tree is alive. <sighs> That the tree is alive. And what's difficult about that is that you know a lot of humans, I think, don't don't understand that. A lot of society doesn't fully quantify that. Isn't able to fully grasp what that means. Um, even me myself, you know, who's you know has a certain degree of awareness regarding certain things, still does things. You know, still eats, still cooks vegetables, still does that sort of stuff. And it's and it is horrifying at times, to a certain degree, to know uh, that that sort of thing might be carrying life, might feel. Uh, you know certain st certain things uh, you know behind the scenes and you know that's what's scary about it and I apologize you know to anyone I've harmed um, through my actions the way we camp indicated you know <sighs> well well no you you know I mean camp simulation from far relay taking precedence um and yeah so they're they're th these you know and, and the subject itself is about trees, but it's not just about trees. I mean, it's about a lot of other things, too. It's a lot of things uh, that are talked about, a lot of concepts at times. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different things. Uh, you know, we, you know, I was, I was looking, doing some of the research regarding uh, trees, and, you know, we sustain, you know, our own, we sustain each other. You know, the life of, uh, you know, trees uh, sustains humans, and just, and the life of humans uh, sustains trees you know they need uh, carbon dioxide we need oxygen <sighs> and not only that but our, our habitats are sustained uh, by trees and, and I think to a certain degree there there might be things out there that humans contribute to the you know to the to, to you know well this is the thing of it well that's also it is our footprint you know that that sort of if trees started like doing some stuff that was like you know what the heck you know if you just saw trees that started blooming certain things and it started affecting like the atmosphere and things like that <sighs> I mean you'd be fairly you'd be you'd be you'd be a little bit upset be like uh, it's 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 difficult to quantify because humans are, are a bit different at least in the physical but like we were talking about the behind the scenes uh, you know if there was counterparts to our lives if there is these dimensional counterparts in regards to our lives I was talking about those memories and stuff like that where you might be experiencing uh, you know memories behind the scenes where when you pass on you know near death experience research points towards uh, potentially multiple afterlives one of the afterlives it points towards is this light this beautiful light right well what if you know when we pass on we go to the you know we go we go to the light wherever it is And and we are able to see some of the memories that we experience throughout our lives. 
And what if that was the same for the tree? Imagine the tree passes on and he sees, you know, what if there is a, a certain uh, mechanism where the tree is able to see in the physical? And, and maybe, maybe it's not, but what if there is something else? What if they could experience certain things within the physical that's, you know, what if they can hear music? I mean, there's been studies where if you play music to certain, uh, certain beings that they sort of perk up, you, you play some, uh, you know, you play some uh, certain, you know, orchestra music, uh, you know, and, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, you got some, you know, the plants are feeling a bit better and that's, that's what's amazing about it. That's, that sort of tells you something. And I know that they could be spirits reacting behind the scenes. I mean, like, okay, well, if there is spirits around us. And they are viewing us. If you play music, they might, you know, sort of like feng shui and see like, oh, well, you're trying to help the plant out. They might take notice of that. They notice some of your actions, you know. The spirits do take notice at times. You know, if you do, if you go and you go for a swim, you know, there are spirits who are like, yeah, he's swimming. Maybe he wants to go for a swim. Maybe he wants to lose some weight. Maybe he just wants to enjoy the beach. Maybe he just wants to have some fun. You know, there's spirits who notice that and, and see that and, and try to uh, facilitate things behind the scenes. And that's what's awesome about the spirit realm. There's a lot of things like that. So it does affect, you know, sort of those, those physical studies that you do. I, I think of... Uh, uh, I think of that, and I want to say it again. Uh, you know, there, there's there's studies regarding water. Uh, you know, and 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 you know, sort of uh, thinking thoughts. And I and I do think that that thoughts are a real thing and do have uh, effect in regards to certain things. Uh, in no, and do have certain effect in regards to certain things. And uh, I feel like um, <laughs> um. Uh, there, 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 there is sort of an effect. So, so when you think about things in positive vibes, I, like, I, I, you know, I, I, I can feel certain energies, and I can feel positive energies at times, and I can feel, uh, you know, I, I can, you know, there's certain thoughts that happen that I'm like, okay, well, there's something behind the scenes. There's more to it than just, you know, thinking, having, you know, nothing to do with anything behind the scenes because it does. And it's one of those things that, you know, I haven't really talked about too often, but, you know, thinking, uh, and there's many different kinds of thoughts. You know, this is the thing of it is there's many different uh, spiritual mechanisms, I feel, in regards to, uh, you know, the thoughts and stuff like that. You know, some days you're not able to think and you're a bit frazzled. You know, some days it's more of a smooth run-on thought. You know, some days it's a bit of a pop-up. Sometimes, so you have a difficult time actually quantifying. Sometimes you actually just have to talk in your mind. You know, what's the difference between you thinking to yourself and actually talking in your mind? Like, there's a difference, right? There's an actual difference. There's a difference in mechanisms, and, and, and there's a difference in, in anatomy. And I think there is a, that's a part of that, you know, remember what we were talking about, those spiritual counterparts, that sort of thing? Well, what if the tree was, you know, had something like that similar too? Just unable to speak to a certain degree in the physical. What if, uh, you know, that sort of stuff, that's what's, you know, cool about it. What if there was psychic trees in the physical? You know how there's, you know, no, listen, hear this. What if there was, like, what if they're experiencing, okay, I'm not saying that they're not experiencing a life, but what if, you know, a counterpart of, uh, of a tree. So let's say that, that, that there is certain things happening behind the scenes, that there is certain spiritual counterparts. Let's say that that tree, um, what if, what if he became psychic and started becoming aware of some of the sounds and experiences within, within the, the physical? So you think about, you know, like physical, uh, you know, psychics, well, they're experiencing certain things that are happening in other realms around us, potentially. Well, you think about that in regards to like the tree. And I know that there's some people like, oh, well, wait a second now. Is the tree li like, it, it, like, are you talking about a counterpart of the tree? Or are you talking about, you know, like, is like, th that's the question on my mind. We think, well, that, that's sort of it. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Well, there's things, there's things like that. I mean, you know, uh, because we, we got to make sure that the, 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 uh, that the physical tree itself is experiencing the life. I mean, what is the life of the tree? But, but that's also it. If you were to say, you know, you know, that's the thing of it. That's what's so freaking ass backwards about it that I can't, I'm not able to convey to the viewers uh, about that sort of thing. Break shake. For freak's sake. Well, I'm not saying that. If I bring it up, I bring it up and it happens and then that's it. You know, this is why. And yeah, so, and it's serendipitous that I'm doing this video on, uh, uh, you know, March, uh, you know, 3rd, and uh, 2018. And it's sort of, uh, it's serendipitous for a reason, because uh, it's also, uh, it is also, do, 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 do. Where was it? yeah, it's World Wildlife Day, and I'll read, I'll read an excerpt from, from Wikipedia directly. So it says, you know, on, well, I have to paste it on, you know, on, on, on 20th December, 2013, uh, at the 68th session, the United Nations General Assembly, uh, 
you know, decided to procra- proclaim uh, 3rd of March, the day of the adoption of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora as World Wildlife Day, which was proposed by Thailand to celebrate and raise awareness of the world's uh, wild fauna and flora. And fauna, you know, fauna, I'm going to read an excerpt on fauna on Wikipedia. You know, fauna is all of the animal uh, life of any particular region or, or time. And flora is, I'm reading it from, from Wikipedia as well, uh, flora is uh, the plant life occurring in a particular region or time, generally the naturally occurring or indigenous native plant life. So yeah, and it's happening, and it's been happening, and, and this year's theme uh, and, and was uh, Big Cats, was Big Cats, and I love it because I just watched uh, Black Panther not long ago, about, I don't know, like a month and a half ago, or, or whatever, I don't know, a month ago, I don't know how long it was, I don't know when it was, but it, was, it wasn't that long ago, I mean, it was last month in February, and it was an amazing movie, and, and there's certain things within my life that happen as a psychic that's uh, quite surreal at times. Uh, certain conversations with spirits and stuff like that, and you, you, and and there's a lot of, uh, and there was a lot of cool things that happened during the movie, uh, you know, and and a lot of scary things too at times. But uh, I love the relation, and I like that they, I like that they dig big cats because it's been on my mind actually lately. Long live the cat! Long live the cat! <laughs> for free sake. But yeah, I forgot to do some of the, uh, I forgot to do some of the the, the uh, advocations. I, I I forgot some of the advocations. I'm, I'm actually gonna. I'm actually going to do some of the uh, advocations right now. There's been a couple articles that I've been reading in regards to research in regards to this uh, off of certain websites, and uh, and I'd like to uh, read off uh, some of the you know, advocations regarding them. Uh, I'm advocating for uh, Mental Floss and uh, Best Love Joy, the, the author of the article, to be protected, defended, healed, etc., defined by my main camp, the way my main camp indicated. And the article was on Mental Floss, the, the website. <laughs> Now, I'm advocating for Wikipedia to be protected, defended, healed, etc. to find my main camp, the way my main camp indicated. <sighs> and I'm advocating for World Wildlife Day to be protected, defended, healed, etc. to find my main camp, the way my main camp indicated. <sighs> and I know that I've been uh, busy trying to f- do this video today, and I haven't really been there, and I'm sorry. Uh, um, I'm hoping there was a cat parade. <laughs> for freak's sake. There was a pink panther. <laughs> for freak's sake. Black Panther, so I, I, for freak's sake. For freak. I like Panthers, man. I'm a fan. <sighs> Pink Panther's uh, an awesome cartoon, man. I'm advocating for healing, protection, defense, as well as etc. in regards to the Pink Panther. <sighs> well, I always think of the cartoon. <sighs> I'm advocating for the Black Panther to be protected, defended, and healed, as well as etc. defined by my main camp. <sighs> I'm advocating for uh, cats to be protected, defended, and healed, as well as etc. Defined by my main camp, the way my main camp indicated, specifically big cats, because that was the, that was one of the themes. And yeah, so I mean, in preparation, I read you know some of the article about you know some of the things on trees, and it's uh, quite fascinating some of the trees on this planet. And I think they're uh, they're quite amazing, and I think there's there's a lot of connotation. Uh, in the spiritual, uh, in regards to trees, mm-hmm. you know, some of the, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of names in regards to tree spirits and stuff like that. <sighs> but I, I think there's, I think there's more to it. I think there's more to it than that. You know how, like, I remember I said earlier that, that they're, they're the sort of perception in regards to trees. I think the trees themselves uh, can be guardians. But I think there is spirits out there that, that watch over the trees, that protect the trees, that defend the trees, etc. <sighs> and yeah, I think uh, I think they they do it uh, to protect. Uh, well, I think they I think they protect people. I think there's a fine line though, <sighs> and I certainly don't want to go into it. <sighs> but yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people on this planet. There's a lot of uh, who know what I'm talking about when I say this, and it's it's been on my mind a bit too lately, a little bit serendipitous as well, um, in regards to it. A uh, bit of a bit of a motivation in, in you know in regards to myself and learning more about things. 
Uh, you know, the sort of, um, there's this, this, this sort of thing, you know, people who, who love trees, who love touching trees and, and hugging trees. There's a certain, uh, there's a certain, uh, there's, I think there's multiple connotations to that. I think some are more, uh, not, I think some are nature-based, uh, but I think there's some that are, that aren't necessarily nature-based too. And not to say, I think, I think some's actually morality-based. I think some is, and I don't know what it stems from per se for what's acceptable, might be back-pocketed, but, uh, you know... <sighs> There might be, uh, you know, I think there's a certain, a certain thing that people see in, in the spirit realms in regards to trees, and and, and there's a reason for those sort of uh, connotation. There's a reasons why people want to protect trees at times. There's a reason why we want to keep them uh, safe, and uh, there's a reason why there's a lot of uh, outreach and support regarding uh, trying to make sure that trees are okay and safe. And I know that we, you know, I'm advocating for an alternative regarding uh, physical. Uh, cutting down of trees i'm advocating for us to come up with with ways you know that's that that's an alternative uh you know uh, for that sort of thing um well yeah for example uh you know the paper that we write on and uh and, and toilet paper itself that sort of thing i'm advocating for uh, there to be uh for for you know the people who are who are researching alternatives regarding that stuff to be protected, defended, and healed as well as etc. to find by main camp and for them to get the resources that main camp indicated. <sighs> because it, it's needed. And really, to say that <sighs> it's not makes no sense. I mean, that sort of thing... Uh, and I, I see your perspective a bit, to a certain degree. Because <sighs> industry gets a little, you know, they a little bit, you know, upset. <laughs> but that sort of stuff, you know, in alternatives... Like, I was I was a bit shocked that, it, that there was no alternatives regarding uh, that sort of thing... Uh, toiletries and that sort of stuff, you know, regarding paper, uh, regarding toilet paper and that sort of thing. I was, I was upset and shocked at it when I was researching online that not even on, not even on, uh, you know, some of the, the, the bigger places they order some stuff that there wasn't even an alternative, you know, regarding that. The amount of, you know, trees that get cut down yearly in regards to that sort of thing uh, is, uh, f you know, fairly important, specifically if there is life within those trees. You know, if you knew that there was, uh, you know, let's say there was, you know, for example, and this is just an example, if there was an overlapping planet, you know, like, and even if there wasn't, I mean, that tree might be still be experiencing life. It might be experiencing, there might be a tree that's, you know, able to hear my voice every dang day. <laughs> I'm having for him to be protected, defended, and healed, as well as etc. defined by my main camp. Them to be protected, defended, and healed, as well as etc. defined by my main camp. <sighs> And yeah, there's uh, there's reasons why people are are drawn towards trees. Uh, I feel I feel there's a, a gravity of trees. I feel like uh, spirits uh, spirits are are, are 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 you know drawn to trees, but also physicals too. And it's weird because physical humans at times sometimes you know they put that you know big sort of impression you know spirits around us put that big sort of impression on us because at times the physical can seem like a a, a a certain kind of big a certain kind of uh you know uh, a certain you know I've, I've equated it sort of having like a, a god suit on and a lot of spirits a lot of physicals you know don't know that a lot of you know a lot of physicals don't know that they they don't realize necessarily that 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 they're uh that you can do certain things in the physical and change the worlds you can change the worlds by writing down a simple advocation and posting it to your door. If you knew that there was tens of thousands of spirits watching you at times, and you could put an advocation uh, saying, you know, I want the trees to be protected on your door, and that might be seen by, you know, hundreds of thousands of spirits by the end of the week, or if, if not, you know, by the end of the day, depending on who you are, depending on how, you know, depending on what's done and how it's done, and, and you know what, that's... You know, progressor. That's a, that's a karmic progressor to a certain extent. You know, I do believe that karma does exist. That you know, moral action does increase. Uh, you know, you know, power in certain dimensions, and afterlife, and 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 that and and you know, and that you know, immorality sort of decreases uh, certain things. Uh, certain, you know, decreases certain power. With, you know, to a certain degree that you write. You know, you know, I believe karma to exist. You know, almost. Uh, you know, literally, to a certain degree. The what? Now, well, maybe keeps information from Fari Light, you know, takes precedence. <sighs> and yeah, so, I mean, if you knew that you could, uh, you know, help, you know, multiple, uh, you know, spirits, uh, 
even physical trees, if you knew that, 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 that certain things that happen behind the scenes in the spirit realm that could help certain spirits, and, and, and that the trees in the physical can't necessarily write down those advocations that we can in, in a certain way, and, and if that's also it, they might be able to advocate for certain things, you know, differently. They might, they might be, you don't know, there might be whole different societies in how they're experiencing. They might be able to talk to each other through the roots. They might be able to talk to each other through the, through the air. You know, and, and, and I'm guessing the trees are one of those, I feel like the trees are one of those, uh, you know, things that are saying long live the wind and long live the sunlight. And then I'm like, yeah, I think, I think rain too sometimes. Different <laughs> freaks out. Although I'm not, I'm not saying that all trees like, you know, wind and, and sun and, and, uh, and rain. But I think they, I think sometimes they do. It makes me worried, you know, during winter, you know, how trees fare in regards to that sort of, uh, sort of climate. And I am, I am sorry if it was, if it was not pleasant, you know. <sighs> you know, I think of trees, and I, uh, I sometimes think of uh, home. I think of it, it. I think it's a certain kind of home. I think of uh, squirrels, and they they pitter patter up the trees, and uh, it must be. Uh, I wonder what the tree thinks about squirrels. <sighs> it's got to be one of those things where it's like, oh, it's that's it's, it's those guys again. What are they doing? What are they up to? <sighs> you know. And imagine if like you know squirrels lived in the actual like because there is hollowed out trees at times, and squirrels do live in the in, in the hollowed out trees at times. It's almost a home inside of it. I wonder if they feel like, you know, like little, you know, critters moving around. Like, what are you doing on my inner, you know, inner, what are you doing on my inner, the, uh, the inner area there, bub? For free's sake. And yeah, the relationship, the, you know, squirrel tail. It's got to be interesting. Because uh, I think from the squirrel's point of view, it's got to be sort of a home kind of feeling at times, depending on the kind of tree, you know? You know, those, those, those squirrels live in the shrubs, you know, for freak's sake, they're kind of just chilling, you know? They're the, the non-tree squirrels, <laughs> for freak's sake, you gotta like those guys too, <laughs> for freak's sake, for freak's sake. Sorry, not, not guys, uh, squirrels. <laughs> but yeah, there's probably a lot of animals that uh, consider the, uh, the tree to be, uh, to be home. I consider it to be uh, to be that to a certain degree. Uh, there's also uh, you know, there's a lot of other symbolism in regards to the tree too. You know as well. Uh, you know there's uh, fertility. There's fertility. That's one of them. Fertility. You know that nature. There's uh, sort of pollination. That sort of thing. Blooming. <sighs> Birth. Sort of like uh, there's seasonal kind too, you know the the movement of flowers, leaves represents sure it could represent death to a certain degree. The leaves themselves. What if there was uh, what if there was uh, what what if you could go incarnate as a tree, but there there could be also spirits who could incarnate into the leaves, and imagine that their whole lifespan is like one season. Like how crazy is that? How cool is that? I'm sorry to. To anyone I've harmed through uh, through me harming leaves and plant life, I do not mean to harm. I'm sorry. <sighs> specifically, uh, specifically the helicopter uh, seeds from maple uh, maple trees. Uh, I'm sorry. <sighs> I didn't mean to harm. I didn't know what I was doing. <sighs> well, it does matter. Yeah, you have no clue what it takes. The amount of uh, the amount of effort and uh, and resources that go into the birth of a tree is amazing, isn't it? I mean, thousands of those you know helicopter you know pods fall down year after year on the ground, <sighs> and yet you know only so many make it. You know, one has to get into the ground deep enough, right? And that's serendipitous in and of itself half the time. But then there's also, uh, you know, the amount of water, the amount of sunlight, where the positioning of the tree, and then to get it all the way up there, all the way up, and then have it get cut down by some person who just who didn't want it there, who was worried, who was scared. 
the tree falls over into his house, what does he do then? And that's that's what's scary about it. Because that's also it too. If you knew, like, if you knew that, like, if you knew that there was, that you could be, reside in certain places behind the scenes, and then as physicals, you were you were at, at times a, a bit of a burden, <laughs> a bit of a burden at times. <sighs> and if you knew that, uh, you know, somebody was like, I just didn't want you there, or move you, or you had to move you, or whatever it is. I mean, like this is it. Trying to look at it from the perspective of other spirits is is difficult at times. You know, if you were, if you knew. Like, how would we operate if we knew, if we had concrete proof that the trees were, were, were not just living, because we know that they're living, we know that they're living organisms, to, living organisms when I say this, but if you knew that they had a soul, and, and, and I know that a lot of people look at it that way, and I know that there's some people just still shaking their heads on it because it's still living to a certain degree, and I know that it matters, but a lot of people still look at it that way. And if, you, if we knew as physicals on this earth, if we knew without a shadow of a doubt, I'm not talking about just, you know, here and there. I'm not talking about here and there. I'm talking about if it started to actually take hold that, you know, there was news stories on mainstream media that there was like, this is it. There's, there's proof. There is straight up proof. <laughs> what would we do? What would we do? What would we do then if if we couldn't? Uh, you know, this is the thing of it. If trees were somehow, um, like, like, if if, if then you know, th you know, those organizations that are fighting for, uh, you know, tr tree rights and 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 plant life and that sort of thing, because we already we have difficulty in regards to animal rights, and I'm fairly certain there's a lot of people on this planet that feel like animals have souls. Like that's one of those ones. Like there's levels of belief regarding certain things, and, and animals is one of those things that's getting up there, right? It's like yeah, the, you know what the 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 uh, you know the the puma, the eastern puma that that you know went that supposedly you know went extinct, and I'm advocating for healing, protection, and defense in regards to the the, to the east. I'm advocating for healing, protection, and defense, as well as etc. to find my main camp in regards to the Eastern Puma, because it's one of those big cats, and, and you know, and, you know, big cats that went away. I remember you know, this is what's crazy about this. This is the this is the spirit realm at where you know this is either the serendipitous chance in my life or the or the spirit realm at work because I, I was stumbling upon posts, and you know, while doing you know research regarding certain things, and uh, and I stumbled upon. Uh, this this article about you know eastern puma you know going extinct and of course then i stumbled upon something else right afterwards that it's wildlife day uh, either today or tomorrow whatever it was <sighs> i don't know I, don't, I can't remember when i was looking the article up either it was yesterday or, the, or today at some time but then i and then I, and then i looked at the theme and it's big cats theme <laughs> and that's really you know i was like wow that that's you know that's it you know of course and i and me doing the, i was i was already geared i think towards doing the video the, you know the videos about you know the the, the audio you know, content about trees and yeah if we, if we knew what would you know that's that's what's how crazy it is there's certain things here and there you take certain roots within life and you never know where you're gonna end up man you never know you never friggin know you never friggin know man got that got that so you never know <laughs> for freak's sake that's it right yeah but there's the opposite. There it is. There it is. There it is. You're, you're, why do you always have to be that way? <sighs> well, I am that way at times. <sighs> I don't know what to say about it. Sorry, a bit of a, a side, a bit of a side conversation here about uh, some of my uh, mannerisms and demeanor regarding certain uh, groups of spirit. <laughs> do I do apologize if. Uh, I'm not necessarily what you want me to be. Sometimes that I feel like I don't get really, uh, not that I, maybe I don't get much of a chance, but that I don't get much of a chance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For freak's sake. You gotta make chances. True. And yeah, uh, you know, what, where would we be? And I'm, I'm not trying to blame people, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to throw, uh, you know, negative karmic allocations when I'm actually trying to do the opposite. I'm advocating for positive karmic allocations. 
advocating for the Bilderbergs to be protected, defended, and healed, as well as etc. to find the remaining camp the way remaining camp indicated. <sighs> Few people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> for free sake. I know that, that people are trying. And I know that, that there is a certain path that certain spirits are... <sighs> and, I am, I, and I am sorry towards certain people. I definitely really dislike it. And that, that's not necessarily why. And that is the worst of the move <laughs> for freeze. Better was to... Was to financially tell truth. <laughs> for free, a bit of a backpedal. <laughs> It's just upset and, and 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 well to a certain degree manipulated not in the way to get anybody hurt to a certain extent but to screw with me probably because <sighs> they knew that would do that ever <sighs> having for healing protection defense as well as etc regarding both the way we camp indicate with many camps generation from far relight taking precedence sorry sorry people i'm just a bit of a bit of a sidetrack there anyhow continuing on uh yeah <sighs> But yeah, you know, that's, uh, you know, if we knew that trees had souls in them, that they were experiencing life, would we be cutting them down anymore? Would we be, uh, you know, like, how would we respond? See, this is this is the thing of it. If we color our perspectives um, with certain, you know, things, like if, if, if all of a sudden the trees started talking, started speaking, you know, English and, and, and language, and they started like, yes, we are the trees, for freak's sake. <laughs> and they were like, listen, uh, you know, yeah, you need to stop doing it because, it, you know, that that really hurts. And he wasn't necessarily talking about just cutting down trees. He was he was talking about, um, what if you were playing some, like, really loud music on your deck and the tree was like, listen, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of that genre, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's sort of it, uh, for freak's sake. I mean, you might be like, well, you, you know, you're a tree, <laughs> but that's not the answer because if someone was to do that to you as a physical human, what if the squirrels, you know, just started like, like putting some boombox stuff. They started like, what if, what if we, what if, like, like this is, this is, this is an, this is an example. What if the squirrels were actually, uh, technologically more advanced than we were? And all of a sudden they were like, yeah, we were just lying to you. We were just lying. We were actually, you know, just playing around. We were, we, we got to play our part. It's like, you know, it's like from Harry Potter, the, 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 you know, the wizards hiding in plain sight in regards to the muggles, man. It's exactly like that. And, and I'm asking for healing protection defense as well as et cetera in regards to the, in regards, you know, et cetera to find my main camp, uh, in regards to the squirrels, I'm advocating for healing, protection, defense, as well as etc. Defined by me, Cap. In regards to, you know, Harry Potter and J. And J.K. Rowling. I mean, Cap. Indicate with me, Cap. Information from far relight taking precedence. But yeah, if they told you that, I'm at, well, all right, all right. Some there's some spirits who don't like my advocation. Regarding there was some. There's a bit of a squirrel. I'm advocating for healing, protection, defense, as well as etc. Defined by me, Cap. In regards. To the squirrels, the way we camp indicated. <sighs> yeah, so some of the spirits around me didn't like the ad the advocation was a little bit of, a little bit askew. There was a, you know, little things here and there that you know, it does it does matter. It does because they well, because certain spirits, yeah, they, there's certain things like that they try to screw around. Have <laughs> free sake. But yeah, if you knew, if, if all of a sudden that was, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the squirrels were like sitting there with ray guns saying, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we, uh, we're actually more technologically advanced than you. Guess what? Uh, you know, we don't like that you play music. Uh, you know, it, you know, this is it. I'm going to start cutting down, uh, homes all of a sudden. <laughs> like, imagine that. What would you, what would you say? You'd be like, well, no, please do not cut us down. Please do not cut us down, man. And that's what we, that's what they'd say. So, you know, like that's, that this is example in regards to the trees, because if the trees were to start talking, they might say that, yeah, please don't cut us down. In fact, on behalf of a lot of trees and all that is, I'm saying not to cut us down. The way we main camp indicate with my main camp's information from far we like taking precedence. I'm also advocating for positive karmic allocations in regards to the physicals on this planet and the physicals on other planets. The way we main camp indicate with my main camp's information from far we like taking precedence. 
while I'm also advocating for positive karmic allocations, as well as etc. to find my main camp in regards to other dimensionals, besides, uh, you know, who aren't physicals. <sighs> okay. So yeah, I mean, there's, there, there's certain things like that. Uh, Sorry, I'm going to be drinking my tea here in a second. <sighs> and, uh, well, not, necess not not a literal second, but uh, soon. <sighs> and, yeah, so there's, cer there's certain things that, that's uh, fairly interesting and... Uh, And one of them is, uh, so yeah, so uh, you know, I talked about home. You know, I also get a wisdom kind of feel. I get a wisdom kind of feel from uh, from trees at times, and I think, I think that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, I, I get this wisdom kind of feel. You know, there's this sort of, uh, you, know, you, you know, don't you? I mean, isn't there that sort of like, you know, larger than life kind of feeling? Isn't there that sort of, uh, there's a quietness? But I'm not just, I'm not just talking about, uh, Oh, wow. I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, it being quiet, but th there's a certain presence, right? A certain quiet presence when you're in trees, isn't there? You know, don't you feel that? As a psychic, I'm telling you that it might be more heightened in regards to myself as a psychic, but I'm telling you that when you're when you're in trees, specifically when you're in the woods, it's almost as if they're watching. Like, they're, it, it kind of feels like that to a certain extent. There's also that sort of like, is, is, you know, are they watching me here? There's that one too, but there's also another one. That's wild. Those, that's the, that's the creepy woods kind of feeling. <laughs> For frig's sake, <laughs> excuse my language. <sighs> but yeah, um, wisdom. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, trees are wise. I feel like they're wise beings. I feel like they're calm. Sometimes I get an intish vibe from them. Intish by, um, by I mean like sort of like an intelligent vibe. But it's a it's a it's a sort of soft intelligence. It's like a it's sort of like a, a wavy kind of intelligence. Almost like a calm intelligence. Soft spoken is what I wanted. You know what I mean. age it reminds me of you know, you know trees are old man so if you knew so if, if there is like you know if you could go incarnate as a tree and and you could experience you know and you're experiencing life to a certain degree uh you know and, you know um if you're experiencing you know if you're experiencing life uh and what does that mean you know 200 years because there's some old trees around man there are some old trees and i'm advocating for them to be you know healed protected defended and etc defined by my camp the way my camp indicated not to mention, though, I am advocating for the young trees, the saplings, to be protected, defended, and healed as well, etc. Defined by main camp, the way main camp indicated. Let's not forget the. Let's not forget them. Let's not forget the. Uh, you know the the, the middle aged trees. I'm advocating for them to be protected, defended, and healed as well, etc. Defined by main camp. <sighs> well, we can't forget the wings because I'm advocating for them to be protected, defended, and healed as well, etc. Defined by main camp, the way main camp indicated. And yeah, so, you know, yeah, well, birds is another one of those, uh, one of those things. <sighs> another one of those, uh, one of those, uh, you know, they, they, that's a natural home for the birds. Long live the birds. Long live the squirrel. Long live the tree. But yeah, if you knew, if you, it was 200 years old, you know, 200 year old tree, 300 year old tree, how old is that, Right? We're only what? Like, there's some people probably listen to the video, you know, we're like, you know, 20 or 30, you know, 40, you know, whatever it is. And how cool is that? I mean, we talk about that, too. We can even, we can interject that. <sighs> well, that's the way I feel about it. Just the little things in life, I suppose. But yeah.
What would that mean? Because I think our perception regarding certain things is a little skewed. I mean, we, we look at trees and sometimes, you know, we're looking up. And sometimes I'm wondering, you know, why we're looking down. Because <laughs> they're, they're, they, uh, they are, technically speaking, at times, uh, older than us. <laughs> at times, you are correct. <laughs> Freaking heck, I think most times, if we're talking about physical age... Well, I know not most times. All right, not most times. You are correct. Because there is young trees. Well, that's the truth. And they're awesome. Yes, they are. There's uh, also um, connection. You know, like I said, the roots. You know, connection. You know, can... Uh, almost connected with uh, trees, uh, you know, there's a sort of, uh, you know, you think of, what do we call, uh, you know, our, uh, well, this is what's, what do we, what do we call family trees? <laughs> well, family trees. <laughs> That's literally like the go-to thing to call it, right? Family connection? No, I mean, it could be, but, you know, we often call it family trees. You know, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, the genealogical tree. Well, there's a reason. Connection. That's a part of it. <laughs> The roots, <laughs> for freak's sake. The branches, the leaves. Yeah, I mean, that's a part of it. I mean, go back to, you know, you're going, you know, if you can go incarnate into the leaves, you know, what if there was aspects of the leaves that you can go incarnate into? I mean, how cool would that be? So, I mean, you think of like Earth, right? And if Earth had a, you know, a spirit, and I think Earth does have a soul. I mean, you think of, uh, you think of, uh, so you think of like, you know, imagine it, it, it equates to earth, right? Because, because we're sitting here like, well, we're human and we have a soul and we are on this earth. And if earth has a soul, what the hell does that mean? What the hell does that mean? If, if, uh, you know, this planet earth was actually just a freckle on some bigger being. <sighs> I'm advocating for healing, protection and defense as well as etc. In regards to a main camp indicated the etc. to find by main camp. In regards to that bigger being. In regards to the bigger beings. The way main camp indicated. Well, I'm advocating for healing, protection, defense, as well as etc. In regards to the smaller beings and the medium-sized beings and the wings. The way main camp indicated with main camp's information from far away light taking precedence. I'm sorry for all the advocate. I, I, I don't mean to, uh, you know... I don't mean to interject too many, uh, too many advocations, but, uh, you know, it's necessary. Like I was saying, if you knew that there was, you know, a hundred, like, like thousands of spirits around you, so those physical, you, you know, listeners and, and viewers, if you're still listening and, and viewing and, and, you know, experiencing the content, you know, experiencers, <laughs> if you're still, uh, experience, if you're still, uh, if you're still experiencing this content, um, you know, imagine if, if there was thousands tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of beings around you also experiencing this content in a sort of way. And how, and how, you know, all those, you know, the advocations that, that, that I did, imagine if, you know, there was massive karmic gains uh, from that sort of thing. You know, this is the sort of thing I was saying is that it, it friggin' matters. Putting progressors into play to, uh, you know, I mean, I've talked about this concept in the past, but I don't feel like interjecting it too much. I do believe in karma. I do believe it increases power. Uh, you know, I do believe morality promotion is uh, a big uh, thing in which does, you know, increase your power and that sort of thing. It also increases sort of access to new levels and areas within other dimensions and stuff like that. Plane levels that I've called it. You can, you can equate it if, like, you know, imagine if the Earth had, like, multiple, you know, surfaces. And, like, you go up, like, through, you know, the promotion of morality. And you can have access to different, like, uh... You, know, you think of it, you know, it, it. and yeah, so there's, uh, you know, there's also, uh, you know, there's also other things too, uh, you know, moving on to other things as well. Uh, you know, there's also like the tree spirits, them, you know, themselves, I think at times have been called, uh, I think maybe, uh, well, there is such a thing as, as dryads, and, and dryads are sort of like, uh, you know, sort of uh, spirits, you know, na sort of like, I think, geared towards, uh, you know, trees. And it's equated to them either, you know, being the trees themselves or, uh, you know, also spirits that, you know, are around trees. 
that, 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 that sort of, uh, you know, hang around trees and sort of, you know, it's related to uh, fertility and the worship of trees at times too, as well. I, I know that it's a, there's a, there's, I think there's multiple interpretations regarding the word. <sighs> Melie uh, being related to the ash tree, sort of uh, another, uh, another term. Another term for spirits, uh, you know, either around the ash tree or the, you know, the ash tree uh, itself. But yeah, we, uh, yeah, there's other things too. There's, uh, you know, there's sort of uh, liberation, you know, like where does that come from? I, I, I associate that with trees too. I don't know where liberation comes from as well. I mean, I don't know. I think that might be more of a, a different term. Yeah, so Kodama, you know, is a uh, in Japanese uh, a Japanese term for uh, you know, spirits that uh, that inhabit uh, trees. <sighs> so I think it's another term that you could refer to uh, technically as uh, you know trees, Kodama, <sighs> to a certain degree. But not to say that there isn't uh, interpretations regarding those words too. And, and trees themselves have a lot of different connotation towards, uh, you know, religion, you know, the tree of life. I've been doing research uh, in regards to different, uh, you know, trees and. And there's been there's been a lot of different uh, areas within religious. Uh, there's a lot of different, you know, religion in regards to trees, I believe. I'm having for them to be protected, defended and healed as well as etc. to find my main camp. And there's trees in fiction too a lot of famous trees within fiction I am advocating for them to be protected defended and healed as well as etc to find my main camp that my main camp indicated <sighs> well it doesn't negate my former uh, you know my beginning uh, well my beginning it doesn't negate any of the advocations I've done in this <sighs> anyhow um You know, there is information within fiction that can be just as informative as the information within the nonfiction. You know, for example, while looking through uh, certain texts online, uh, while, you know, while, you know, I, I, while researching, uh, you know, you, know I, I, you stumble upon things that you see and, and equate with certain things within, uh, uh, within, you know, within spirit realm research, within, within real research. You know, because that's, that's also it. A lot of, there, there is spirits around us and there is influences around us, then why wouldn't there be influences regarding our fiction writing? Why wouldn't there be influences regarding the things that we write down? You know, a lot of the stories that we write down, a lot of the things like that, you know, there's certain energies that people haven't necessarily fully equated yet or, or and understood in regards to uh, psychic awareness. A lot of the energies that we feel on a daily, um, impressions, you know, you think of Christmas, you think of holidays, you think of certain things like that, and... and And you think of what impressions you get. What sort of colors do you think of? What sort of things is that? Is that that's real? It's real things. That, that there's a real component to that behind the scenes. It's not just you thinking about it. It's not just uh, you know something that's you know a figment of your imagination. And imagination itself could be real. I think I'm fairly certain that it is to a certain degree because it goes somewhere. You do see it. There there is an actual component that you can see, and it might correspond with things behind the scenes. And I, I'm advocating for safety regarding it. You know, I, I feel like uh, if the spiritual authorities, you know, see, you know, you, uh, you know, you just using your imagination to, you know, to play around and to have fun, uh, I think they'll realize that and recognize that. <sighs> of course, just because it's uh, fiction doesn't mean it isn't real. You know, the fictional universe in which we, you know, talk about in the physical could be, could very much, you know, be real behind the scenes. Heck, even the description uh, from Wikipedia holds keys to some of the some of the answers. You know, fiction fiction is the you know this is and this is straight from the Wikipedia. Well, you know, this is this is reading from uh, you know ex excerpt from the Wikipedia. You know, fiction is the classification for any story or setting that is derived from imagination. In other words, not based strictly on history or fact. <sighs> you 
And so, yeah, I know it's not necessarily a literal regarding it being, you know, just imagination. It's more of a metaphorical regarding, you know, something that might be fictitious. <laughs> In this instance. But yeah, uh, you know, and just because it's not based off of history that we perceive to be history and slash or fact that we perceive to be fact doesn't make it not real per se. Of course, the word imagination in this instance isn't necessarily just referring to imagining in a visual way, but also indicates coming up with the idea via thought, contemplation, wonderings, and etc. You know, the works of our uh, fiction have been inspired by many different motivations and intention rife with symbolism pertaining to many different things that have happened behind the scenes, both fictitious and real. And you know what, and there might be, you know, like, I mean, I was talking about thought earlier, and I am advocating for, you know, safety regarding thought, contemplations, and wonderings, because they do, they may have certain uh, connotation behind the scenes, it may affect things behind the scenes, and, I, and I'll say it again, I, I think if uh, the spirit, you know, I feel that if the spiritual authorities recognize that you're not trying to harm anybody, that you're just trying to, you know, wonder, or contemplate, or think to yourself, that they would recognize that, and, and see that. <sighs> And, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, there's a lot of things, uh, you know, you know, that they could hold, uh, you know, answers, you know, there's certain, uh, you know, sort of mythology regarding that sort of stuff. So if, if even in our, even if there is real things regarding our fiction, then what could that mean about the things that we think, uh, well, I guess, I guess we can go to mythology because mythology is sort of like in that, it's almost in a gray area. And I don't want to say it like that because it's not necessarily, you know. But it, it kind of feels like that to a certain degree. It almost feels like it's like a mix between um, uh, certain history and and sort of like um, like but like far off, like so. Uh, it, it, mythology itself is uh, it's difficult to explain. It's difficult to uh, it's difficult to fully say. Um, You know, refers to collected myths of uh, groups of people to, or to study or the study of such myths. But, you know, that folklore itself is, you know, uh, you know, a lot of times passed down verbally. And so it's almost like sort of lost uh, to history to a certain extent. But, you know, and, and I know that certain mythology may be fictitious, but like I was just saying, just because it's fictitious, at least to, to what we perceive, doesn't mean it's not real to a certain extent, specifically behind the scenes. I mean, not to mention all the other things we haven't, you know, experienced in the physical. <laughs> not to mention all the worlds out there that might exist. There have been a lot of influences um, in, uh, in fiction uh, regarding trees. I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of different uh, symbolism, uh, you know, throughout it all. Watching films... When you're watching films, uh, take a look and, and and pay attention to some of the uh, symbolism that you see. You never know that if there's uh, certain things that are being uh, seen, you know, you know, in fiction that are actually, uh, you know, symbolic and uh, and real in regards to certain things that you know have happened behind the scenes that that are happening behind the scenes. Uh, that you know that could potentially happen behind the scenes. <laughs> there's a lot of things like that, and. Um, and it all matters, because I know that, that, I feel like there's a lot of people on this planet who, who want to know some of the stuff that's happening, uh, you know, in the spirit realm. Uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, people who, who, who feel that, uh, that the, uh, the society, you know, earth-based physical society, uh, you know, deserves to know to a certain extent, <laughs> regarding a, a wide range of things. And, and we, uh, you know... And we, and yeah, so, but, you know, going back to some of the other, uh, you know, things I, in, in, in religion, there's, there's a lot of uh, symbolism regarding trees too, you know, and one of them is Wicca and, you know, I sort of get this, uh, you know, it, this sort of stems uh, from something, you know, in particular, and I'm advocating for healing, protection, defense, as well as et cetera, defined by being camp in regards. Uh, but, you know, you think of, uh, I think of Wicca and I sort of get, you know, I, I, I think of witches and stuff like that. But I also think of, I think there's, there's also trees that are, that are, you know, I, I think of, uh, you know, that there's influences not only stemming from witches, but also that of trees. 
I think a, a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, religions, uh, you know, are uh, sort of, uh, you know, there's a lot of influences, you know, regarding it. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's actually a tree called the uh, Kalpavriksha. And it's uh, related to uh, Hinduism, and there's a lot of symbolism in, in regards to that tree. It's a, it's a, it's a particular uh, tree of life called the uh, the Kalpavriksha tree of life. <sighs> and uh, but there's there's others too, you know the uh, the Igrizel Ig uh, God tree, <sighs> you know, sort of uh, relating to to Norse uh, religions. <sighs> And things of, and uh, and also there's, uh, you know, the, the things of that nature to a certain degree, for what's acceptable. You know, there's the tree uh, of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, the, and there's also the uh, the Christian biblical tree of life. You know, there's also the the Jewish Kabbalah tree of life. There's also uh, you know there's there's also symbolism regarding you know uh, certain cosmic trees of life that may exist behind the scenes uh, that link uh, whole dimensions together. I'm advocating for uh, you know those trees to be protected, defended, and healed as well as etc. Defined by my camp, the way my camp indicated. They're always. And yeah, but there, there's uh, you know a lot of other things too. You know regarding. Um, But yeah, that, that's that's some of it. And I, I'm gonna uh, I, want, I want to talk about some famous trees now. I mean, I want to I want to definitely uh, I want to end it with some of the stuff that you know I was I was writing regarding uh, famous trees here. And there's uh, you know there's one called the the Eastern White Pine Tree of Peace, you know, the Iroquois, or the Haudenosaunee, a five nation confederacy including the Mohawks, the Onedas, the Onondagas the Cayugas and the Senecas, as well as potentially others, uh, not officially mentioned in some of the phys physical uh, histories, uh, probably have uh, many famous trees being a people of nature, but one of the trees in which is listed in some of the research you know, I've done is in regards to a man named Dagenawida, Dagenawida you know, also known as the Great Peacemaker, Shenan Rahawi in Mohawk, or is it Shenan Rahawai in Mohawk? A prophet born in the 15th century is closely tied with this tree, this this uh, this tree of peace, and, and you know this uh, you know the Eastern White Pine Tree of Peace. Along his travels, he talked of peace and prosperity, friendship and unity, and trying to bring together the nations that would eventually become part of the Iroquois Confederacy. The symbol chosen by Daganowida, Daganowida. Uh, for the Confederacy was the Great White Pine Tree. You know, Barbara Graymont, uh, you know, an authority on the Iroquois, states the tree had four symbolic roots: the Great White Roots of Peace, spreading north, east, south, and west. If any other nation ever wished to join the League, it would have to follow the White Roots of Peace to the source and take shelter beneath the tree. Atop the tree, he placed an eagle to scream out a warning at a the approach of danger. He symbolically planted the tree in the land of the Onondagas, the place of the great council fire. There the confederate lords or peace chiefs would sit beneath it and be caretakers of the great peace. And these lords, the chiefs, would figuratively never die because their chiefly titles would be passed down to their successors forever. In this way the League of the Five Nations would always be kept alive. I'm advocating for healing, protection, defense, as well as etc. in regards to uh, Iroquois. As well as uh, Barbara Graymont. The way we camp indicate with many camps in range from far away taking precedence. A Wikipedia entry on the Iroquois Tree of Peace. Uh, this concept of creating a new tree of peace is rooted in the tradition created by Dekanawada's initial ceremony of for the tree of peace. The roots will stretch in all directions and it is upon these roots our future brothers and sisters must forge their own peace and continue to the path we have created. Its characteristic bundles of five needles 
became the symbol of the five nations joined together as one, according to the Haudenosaunee tradition. The great law of peace ended the ancient cycle of enmity and continuous conflict between the separate tribes and united them into the Iroquois Confederacy that made them into the most powerful force in North America until the rapid expansion of European colonization in the 18th century. You know, that, I don't know, I had a really cool time researching that one tree. I thought it was a, a really cool uh, concept. And of course, when I stumbled upon the, uh, the General Sherman tree, I... Uh, I noticed that it was, uh, it was actually, uh, it was actually the general, uh, who was named after Tecumseh, which is uh, another, uh, Native American, uh, earlier on, had sort of a, a last stand, sort of, uh, sort of ending. The General Sherman tree, you know, the General Sherman tree is a, a Sokoi, I think it's called, In which is, was named after an American general named William Tecumseh Sherman by James Wolverton, Wolverton uh, a naturalist uh, who is also a lieutenant under Sherman by volume. It's the largest stem tree on earth. You know, the, germ, the, the general Sherman tree. By volume, it's the largest stem tree on earth residing in California. There's the old Tajiko tree. The old Tajiko is considered to be one of the oldest uh, clonal trees, you know, Norway spruce found in Sweden. It's close to 10,000 years old, even though the visible part of the tree is much younger. It was named from the researcher Leif Kuhlman, who found tree, in, you know, who found the tree in which he named it after his dog who passed on. And I'm advocating for anyone, uh, you know, I sp speak about within this film, within this content. I'm advocating for anyone I talk about within this uh, content to be protected, defended, and healed, as well as etc. Defined by my main camp, the way my main camp indicated, with many camps emerged from far relate taking precedence. <sighs> you know, there's the uh, Thimama Marimanu tree, you know, the 200 year old banyan tree in India in which, according to local legend, can help childless couples uh, conceive who worship at the base of the tree. There is a temple beneath the tree itself, in which lends to the former legend about fertility. You know, there is a theater in which celebrates uh, Maha Shivaratri, a festival celebrating the god Shiva. The words uh, Maha Shivaratri you know, means the great night of Shiva. You know, it was first noticed by Regret Iyer, a journalist from Bank. Bangalore, uh, India. You know, the tree itself was said to have been born from another legend earlier on, in which listed at the shrine, in which is, in, involves being born from a funeral pyre, in which took place in 1434, which is, you know, which is said to, you know, where the tree was to have been born from. There's also the hardy tree. The hardy tree is an ash tree located in a churchyard in London. The trees, the tree was names, named after the Poet Thomas Hardy, who had rearranged the tombstone near the ash tree after being tasked to do so after a, a railway expansion was set to cut right through the graves. He supposedly did not relish the task, and it was a, potentially an inspiration in regards to his The Lavelled Churchyard uh, poem. <sighs> the Methuselah tree is another one. You know, I think this bristlecone uh, pine tree is named after uh, Methuselah, potentially the oldest living man in recorded. Uh, you know, in the in the Hebrew uh, Bible, you know, it's it's a near five thousand year old tree that used to be considered the oldest non clonal tree, in which resides in the Methuselah Grove in the ancient Bristlecone Forest, where another tree uh, superseded the Methuselah tree in regards to the age, in which I've dubbed the Asari tree. The Asari tree is supposedly five thousand six hundred seventy years old. Uh, there is other older clonal clonal uh, organisms, you know, the 80,000-year-old uh, quaking aspen colony named Pando, the 11,700-year-old Kiosote bush named King Clone, and also old Tajiki, which I've mentioned. 
There's also the the Hangman's Elm Tree, the Elm Tree located in Manhattan, which is uh, part of a, a dark history which emerged in the past, uh, having to do with being used as a hangman's tree, both during and after the American Revolution. You know, I feel the tree is innocent in any wrongdoing, uh, to be honest, other than having not much of a choice uh, but to be used as a way of punishing certain people in the past. <sighs> and not to say that, you know, I'm not trying to say that the, the hangman's elm had anything to do with it. It's also the 9-11 survivor tree. This tree was pulled from the rubble of the Trade Center disaster that took place on September 11th, 2001. You know, this uh, colliery pear tree looked half alive when they found it, but it survived and was planted at the September 11th uh, Memorial and Museum. You know, there have been multiple survivor trees over the years. The Oklahoma, City's, the Oklahoma City bombing left another tree being labeled as the survivor tree after making it through that tragedy. There was the bonsai tree that survived the bombings of Hiroshima, in which I've dubbed the hero tree. There was also the the there was also a pine tree which survived the 2011 tsunami, in which I dubbed the Riku tree. And the Oklahoma City one, I, I believe, is uh, the uh, which is it called now? I want to make sure that I got it correct here. Yeah, it's the Oklahoma Survivor Tree. That's that's what it's called. And yeah, there's there's another one called the uh, Hyperion Tree. A Hyperion, uh, a coast redwood, is the tallest known living tree. Where there used to be a, a lot, of, there used to be a lot of similar sized trees, in which logging felled most of them. You know, it was given its name by two naturalists who, uh, who uh, I think had stumbled upon it. Well, potentially named from uh, Greek mythology, Hyperion, meaning the high one. There's the Sunland Bobab tree. You know, the Sunland Bobab tree is a huge mammoth residing in uh, South uh, Africa. The age of this tree is a dis is disputed, you know, ranging from 6,000 years old to, you know, 1,060 years old. And this type of tree naturally hollows out after about a millennium. And, is, and it looks like you could live in this kind of tree depending on how it hollows out. It's pretty huge. The picture of it's fairly shocking. <sighs> You'd have to have a, a you know a huge yard, a huge yard to be able to, to house that tree. <sighs> There's the Anne Frank tree. The white horse chestnut is related to the Anne Frank story, in which uh, became a part of her hopes regarding freedom. You know, it resided right outside of her window during the two years. Uh, she spent hiding during World War II. The tree was developed, uh, has developed, well, did develop an ailment and was scheduled to be cut down in 2007, but the support for it to be saved was too great. They created a foundation to keep, to keep it uh, alive and to provide uh, care for it. You know, sadly, in 2010, the, the tree blew down in a storm, although saplings germinated from the tree's chestnuts have been planted at sites around the world. There's the uh, the major oak tree, you know, a symbol of Sherwood Forest, a massive oak tree which stands in the heart of this uh, legendary forest. It supposedly is 800 to 1,000 years old, 33 feet around, with branches spread up to 92 feet. The Woodland Trust crowned the tree England's Tree of the Year in 2014, and the oak became known as the Ma Major's Oak. Well, it was that the oak became known as the Major's Oak, and then simply became the Major Oak. And it has also been referred to as the cockpen tree, and as its hollow trunk was used to pen cockerels uh, for cockfighting. That's quite a, that's quite adventurous. <laughs> the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi tree, you know, this ficus religiosus, uh, ficus religiosa, sorry, is said to be the tree in which Buddha gained enlightenment. Buddhist nuns brought the famed tree to Sri Lanka in the 3rd century BCE, the sacred city of Anuradhapur uh, sprung up around the tree, and the, the location of the tree and the tree itself is an important site for Buddhists. Uh, there is said to be a direct descendant of the tree at Mahabodhi Temple, in which I've dubbed the Mahabodhi Temple Fig Tree. There's also the Tree of Tenir. Uh, this acacia is thought to have been one of the most isolated trees in recent history, one of the landmarks in the areas uh, 
Niger and was very important in regards to the locals who admired its beauty and being able to survive in the middle of the desert. You know, it was hit by a truck driver in 1973 and now is located in a mausoleum at the Niger National Museum. You know, there was a sculpture placed, I believe, in the original spot where the tree once stood. A metal sculpture. Yeah, I wish that tree was still around. You know, there's the, uh, the ash brittle yew tree. This yew tree is about 3,500 to 400 years old and is cherished by the locals. Some even believe a pre-Christian chieftain is buried underneath the, the, the tree. Now, it may be considered to be Britain's oldest thing dating before Stonehenge. You know, it grows in St. John's Baptist Church and will likely outgrow all of us. There's also the uh, trees of Hippocritus. The current tree of Hippocritus is an oriental plane tree in which is planted in the areas where Hippocritus, the father of modern medicine, taught his pupils the art of medicine. The current tree is only about 500 years old, but could possibly be descendant uh, from the original tree in which resided 2,400 years ago in Hippocritus' time. Seeds and cuttings from the tree have been spread all over the world, specifically in regards to medical schools and associations. You know, I wonder about the possibility about such trees having the power of healing, which uh, have been associated with medicine... Because, they I mean, the trees themselves have been associated with medicine and that sort of thing. So I'm wondering if there's certain... Because I do feel healing power behind the scenes. I can feel healing power regarding uh, certain energies, regarding uh, spirit realm. Some some aspects of the spirit realm. And, uh, you know, I'm wondering... Uh, I'm wondering if there's uh, healing power within certain kinds of trees. Within, I'm wondering what kind of powers the trees have. <sighs> there's got to be a lot of them. I just often wondered, uh, like I was saying earlier about certain things, you, you do certain things and the spirit realm reacts around you. For you to say that, you know, that these trees are, you know, associated with a, a man of medicine, then there's certain things that could potentially uh, come about from that. There's, uh, you know, healing powers that can be bestowed upon uh, trees uh, from the spirit realm itself. I would advocate for... for I would advocate for such a thing in regards to the... I would advocate for what my main camp indicated. <sighs> With my main camp's erasure from far relate taking precedence. <sighs> There's also a lot of uh, tree gods and deities and... Uh, deities, sorry, deities. But, but some people pronounce it deities, man. There's, there's some people who pronounce deities as deities. I'm fairly certain. The tree, tree gods, uh, deities, and uh, and mythology. You know, I feel that there are many uh, different kinds of gods uh, within all that is, uh, and which is associated with tree, well, with trees. Sorry, I think there's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of gods associated, in you know, I think potentially, you know, and uh, there's a lot of mythology regarding trees throughout, you know. Yeah, Nang Ta Ki, and you know sometimes re uh, referred to you know sometimes female guardian spirits within the folklore of Thailand, you know that are sometimes associated with being around uh, the Hopia a Dorada tree. You know there is tree di deities uh, in Indian uh, folklore which have been uh, which have malevol malevolent qualities called Yakshinis. <sighs> Of course, there's uh, the, the, the Dryads and uh, Hamadryads of uh, Greek mythology. You know, Sylvian is another term I've come to you know, see not only in certain mythology, but also within you know, fiction as well. You know, Hathor, is an, uh, Hathor is, a, is an Egyptian god, also called uh, Lady of the Sycamore uh, in the Old uh, Kingdom. A fairly important god uh, regarding uh, Egyptian uh, mythology. <sighs> has been also uh, associated with, uh, with certain animals as well, too. <sighs> been, been associated specifically the cow. There's also uh, spirits called uh, Kodama and Kurosomi, the spirit of the Prunus Suralata, the Japanese cherry tree. Melier, the nymphs 
of the Fraxinus ash tree in Greek mythology. <sighs> I spoke about that earlier. Laum is uh, a goddess of the trees and, and forests in Baltic mythology. Yeah, and yeah, Nang uh, Tani is also a you know an ambiguous female spirit uh, who lives in uh, the Musa Balb Isiane, a wild banana tree. <sighs> I might have pronounced. I've been I, there's a couple pronunciations through the video that I've been fairly a bit well, a bit sketch, a bit a bit sketchy on. I do apologize. <sighs> so, Peng Shu. An edible dog-shaped spirit in Chinese uh, mythology. I was so I'm very curious. At why, I don't understand the the edible part. I, I need to research that a bit more because I did sort of. Uh, you know, and and this is you know, a lot of this. Uh, you know a lot of the information came from uh, Wikipedia, and I'm advocating you know, as well as um, well as well as another site. Uh, you know, also uh, ancientwisdom.com, uh, and that's with a dash in the in between ancient and wisdom. Uh, Pai Fang is a Chinese uh, tree, tree god. As well as uh, Rakapilla, a tree deity from uh, Madagascar. Siju Euphorbia Milivar, you know, the living embodiment of Bathobrai, the supreme deity in the Bathoist religion of the Bodo people or Mech of Assam and Nepal. <sighs> There's also Tain Mahuta, a Tua deity of the forests and birds and one of the children of Rangai Nui and Papatu Anuku, Mori mythology. <sighs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of interesting things and I haven't fully researched um, what these are. I mean, I sort of threw it together kind of bit in haste. <sighs> so I do apologize for that as well. And yeah, there's the, the you know trees are are, are a wondrous uh, sort of being, um, and I and I feel like they exist uh, in the way that we perceive them, um, in the physical to a certain extent, in multiple aspects, in different dimensions. So, like I was saying, uh, you know, if there's certain counterparts of the tree, uh, you know, that sort of walk around and go you know go to school similar to that of humans. You know, um, you know, that would be that would be one of them because hey, here we are, humans walking around, going to school at times. But there's also, uh, you know, the tree itself in the physical aspect of it. You know, sort of that tree that kind of, you know, that wavy kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, waves in the wind. You know, that sort of thing. And it's, uh, and yeah, I think that sort of existence exists in other dimensions too. You know, the physical aspect that we're able to see. Not to say that that other dimension. Other dimensional counterparts of the tree, you know, don't exist in other uh, dimensions because I feel that they do to a certain extent for what's acceptable. And yeah, yeah, I'm advocating for anyone who has anything to do with this content to be protected, defended, healed, etc., defined by my main camp the way my main camp indicated. This has been a uh, discussion of uh, trees. And I and I wish them well. I wish them good cheer. I wish them healing. Uh, I wish them. Uh, I wish them. Uh, I wish them. I wish them wisdom. Yeah. So I missed uh, one of the trees I wanted to talk about was the El Arbol uh, del Tuli tree. You know, it's uh, a Mexican tree, uh, Montezuma bald cypress. And uh, There was actually controversy whether uh, whether or not this tree was actually one organism or several. Although DNA analysis uh, has potentially proved uh, the former, but I'm not necessarily certain. <sighs> yeah, I just want to give a shout out to it because it did matter for uh, to me uh, to 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 catch this one tree. I didn't want to I didn't want to let it go. <sighs> and uh, so yeah, I want to move on to uh, you know this is the ending part. I wanted to move on to uh, testifications. Just a couple testifications I uh, I set up.
So I and others uh, defined by my main camp testify in regards to Rowan the Tree, Sumac aka Bamboo, Petals aka Tangles, Lakal, Boobam, Bofler, Fred the Tree, Jones the Tree, James the Tree, John the Tree, My Neighborhood Trees, and others defined by my main camp, all the way down the family tree, the way my main camp indicated, this includes what my main camp indicated, which might include parts of their family, processes, living situations, significant others, etc., defined by my main camp. The names I testify in regards to include uh, what my main camp indicated in the instances that they indicated. You know, which might include parts of their counterparts, interpersonal, all personal, outer personal, and etc. defined by my main camp. These testifications might include clarifications regarding the main camps of those in which I am testifying in regards to this paragraph, depending on if my main camp indicated. I'm advocating for the punishment that happens regarding these testifications to be what my main camp indicated. I'm also advocating for healing, protection, defense, etc. defined by my main camp the way my main camp indicated in regards to those I, who I and others have testified in regards to this paragraph. <sighs> Women Camp's current information from Far Relay for what they chose for this paragraph takes precedence over anything the way Women Camp indicated from Far Relay. I and others defined by Women Camp testify in regards to the Ash Brittle Yew Tree, the General Ger Sherman Tree, the Tree of Tanir, the Jaya Shri Mahabodhi Tree, the Mahabodhi Temple Fig Tree, the Major Oak Tree, the Trees of Hippocritus, the Tree of Anne Frank, the Sunland Bobob Tree, the Hyperion Tree, the 9 11 Survivor Tree, the Hangman's Elm Tree, the Methuselah Tree, the Old Tajiko Tree, the El Arbol Del Tuli Tree, the Themama Mariamanu Tree, the Hardy Tree, the Eastern White Pine Tree of Peace, the Kalp of, 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 the Kalp of, of Riksha Tree of Life, the, the, the Igdrizel God tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Christian biblical tree of life, the Jewish Kabbalah tree of life, two trees of Vlinor, the white tree of Gondor, the Cranel Creek giant, the God's woods, the holy tree of the two trees, the forests of Endor, the Pandorian forests, the Lindsay Creek tree, the, New the Nematon tree, the Asari tree, the King Clone Tree, the Pando Tree, the tr the Peace Trees defined by my main camp, the War Trees defined by my main camp, the Pragmatic Trees defined by my main camp, the Trees of Life defined by my main camp, the Trees of Death defined by my main camp, the Hero Tree, the Riku Tree, the Oklahoma Survivor Tree, the Cosmic Trees, the Titan Trees, the Trees defined by my main camp, and others defined by my main camp. And the trees that I've been mentioning are, uh, are defined by my main camp. In fact, uh, you know, this this paragraph and marking is uh, defined by Women Camp with Women Camp's information from Far Relay taking precedence. You know. So all the way down the family trees, the Women Camp indicated. Now, this includes what Women Camp indicated, which might include parts of their family, processes, living situations, significant others, etc., defined by Women Camp. The names I testify in regards to include what Women Camp indicated in the instances that they indicated, which might include parts of their counterparts, interpersonal, all personal, outer personal, and etc., defined by Women Camp. These testifications might include clarifications regarding the main camps of those in which I am testifying in regards to this paragraph, depending on if Women Camp indicated. I'm advocating for the punishment that happens regarding these testifications to be what Women Camp indicated. I'm also advocating for healing, protection, defense, etc., defined by Women Camp, the way Women Camp indicated. In regards to those who I and others have testified in regards to this paragraph, my main camp's current information from Far Relay for what they chose for this paragraph takes precedence over anything the way my main camp indicated from Far Relay. <sighs>